We've all heard the stories about someone Googling headache and Google telling them that they've got a brain tumour and then they start crying and come running to their doctor. And with search engines so easily available, it's not a surprise that when people start to become unwell, they start to search their symptoms online. Today, I wanted to put this to a test. My name is Kieran, I'm a junior doctor and a comedian working in Manchester. As always, if you're new, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm gonna be testing an array of different symptoms, putting them into a symptom checker, which I found online, and seeing if I can predict what they're gonna say is wrong with this patient. I spent some time yesterday writing down these symptoms and they're in this lovely little bowl here. I've written all sorts of symptoms. I've written headache, fevers, urinary symptoms, I've written joint pains, I've written rashes, anything you can think of as a symptom is probably in this bowl. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking three of these symptoms and I'm gonna be trying to guess what I think Google is gonna predict is the diagnosis for this patient. Are you ready for a game of doctor versus Google? I should probably add as a disclaimer, if you're unwell, you should always see your doctor rather than Googling things. This is just a fun experiment. Symptom number one is pain on urination. Symptom number two is loss of vision. Symptom number three is tooth pain. So a couple of things I'm thinking, first of all, pain on urination usually means infection. Uh, so I think that's probably going to be high up the list of the things they think it's going to be. The other thing it could be is that there's a syndrome called writer's syndrome that involves urination, so can't pee, can't see, so it involves the eyes, and also I'm sure it gives you joint pains as well. Although the third symptom doesn't quite fit into that, I think I'm going to go with writer's syndrome, if it's that specific. Let's see and find out. So their number one diagnosis was food poisoning. I'm not sure how they've got to food poisoning given those symptoms. The next one is prostatitis, which I can kind of understand because in prostatitis you will get pain on urination. And then we've got tooth abscess as a third one. Tooth abscess has obviously come into that because of the fact that uh, you know, you've got tooth pain. So maybe they've had an abscess and they've got sepsis or an infection that's spread around the body. I'm not totally convinced with this and I've pretty much failed this one. Let's put all of the symptoms back in. Try number two. The first symptom is cramps. The second symptom is loss of taste. The third symptom is a swollen knee. I am going to guess with loss of taste, it surely is gonna say COVID because that's huge at the moment and I think they're gonna say that. With cramps and joint pains in general, I think it could say vitamin deficiency, maybe vitamin D deficiency. So those are the two that I'm gonna go for. Let's see what Google says. So the, the, the number one they've gone for is multiple sclerosis. So if you have cramps and a swollen knee, this website is gonna tell you that you've got MS. Then it's, then it's gone anterior cruciate ligament injury. How have we got there? How have they gone anterior cruciate ligament injury before they've even said anything like osteoarthritis? So an ACL injury is usually a high impact injury. It's the one you see footballers are often injuring, involved in these big tackles or these turning movements, and it's one of the cross ligaments in your knee. I'm extremely surprised that it said that. Fractures of the knee, it's also said. It's not talked about the loss of taste at all really. Lactose intolerance has come before osteoarthritis in this case. Once again, I failed this one. Let's put the symptoms back in the pot. The first symptom is unable to pass urine. The second symptom is tiredness. The third symptom is fever. So fever, unable to pass urine and tiredness. Being unable to pass urine is called urinary retention and having that as well as having a fever more than often is gonna to point to having a urinary tract infection. Tiredness as well would fit with that, with having an infection. So I'm gonna go infection as my number one, so urinary tract infection or prostatitis. Let's see what Google says. They've gone prostatitis as number one, they've gone myelitis as number two, and they've not even included just urinary tract infection. What a load of rubbish. I can't believe that they've not included urinary tract infection on that list. That is literally the first thing you would get taught at medical school. I've done a job in urology as well and I've seen loads of this and UTI should have been top of that list. They've got influenza as well. I get fever and tiredness can be symptoms of the flu, but what about the inability to pass urine? 
Where is that coming into it? Let's throw these back into the bowl. Another three symptoms. We've got itching, hemoptysis, which is coughing blood, back pain. I'm, I'm not sure whether itching's gonna fit into this, but let's go with the hemoptysis. Causes of hemoptysis include lung cancer, PE, so having a blood clot, infection. I think in this case, given that they've got both hemoptysis and also back pain, I, my number one differential would probably be cancer with bony mets, so spread of the cancer to the spine. I'm not sure what they're gonna say, but that's probably what I would say. Hemoptysis and back pain. It could also be pulmonary embolus, I think. So it, the back pain could be a pleuritic back pain because of the blood clot, and that would explain having the blood in the sputum as well, although I'm not quite sure whether itching is coming into this, but maybe they were itchy already. The number one they've gone for is COVID-19. I can believe that. I can actually understand why they've said that. So an infection can give you hemoptysis. More classically, bacterial infection rather than a viral infection, but I can understand that. Back pain associated with viral infections, myalgia, you get lots of muscle aches and that sort of thing. They've also said bronchitis, pneumonia. They've not mentioned, so they have mentioned lung cancer, but it's quite low down their list. And they've said pneumonia as well. I probably should have considered that more and gone down more the infection route, because I think that is a good differential in this case. They have mentioned DVT, but they haven't mentioned specifically pulmonary embolus. I'm doing absolutely terribly at guessing what they're gonna guess. Let's move on to the next one. We have got palpitations, so that's the feeling of your heart racing, hoarse voice, and then we have got stomach pains. So stomach pains, palpitations, hoarse voice. That is a series of weird symptoms if I've ever heard one. Palpitations can be caused by things like anemia, they can be caused by anxiety, they can be caused by atrial fibrillation. So that's the route I'm thinking of straight away. Stomach pains, I'm not sure where that's coming into it. Maybe it's referred pain, maybe it's actually chest pain rather than stomach pain. And then that could be more associated with a heart thing or an anxiety thing. And then we've got hoarse voice. So hoarse voice, maybe involvement of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Mm, difficult one. I think I'm going to go for atrial fibrillation or abnormal heart rhythm as number one. And then I think I'm gonna go anxiety as number two. The number one they've gone for is lactose intolerance. Uh, that wouldn't traditionally give you palpitations, but it would give you the stomach ache, so I can kind of understand it on that front. The second thing they've gone for is bowel cancer. I think the reason they've done this is because maybe, and this is a far stretch, it's that the bowel cancer is maybe giving you the abdominal pain, you're anemic because of the cancer that's giving you palpitations, and maybe there is something going on in the lungs, like metastasis, and that's causing the hoarse voice if it's in the apex of the lungs, maybe. Number three, they have gone for panic attack. So I'm gonna take that as a big W because they have said panic attack as number three. Let's move on to the next one. Headache, loss of sensation. I didn't put where, but just generally loss of sensation sensation and collapse. So collapse, headache, loss of sensation. The first thing I'm thinking of immediately is, is it a bleed in the brain? So something like a subarachnoid hemorrhage, SAH, or is it another type of bleed in the brain or is it a stroke? Stroke wouldn't give you a headache necessarily, but it would give you a lack of sensation. So that's what I'm thinking straight away. Let's see what Google has to say. They have gone number one, stroke. Number two, viral hepatitis. How on earth have they got to viral hepatitis from there? Stroke, I understand completely. You've got loss of sensation, you've got a collapse, I understand why they've said stroke and that's why it was in the top of my list as well. They've said viral hepatitis. I can't even think of the connection between these things and I've got a medical degree. Multiple sclerosis. I can kind of understand multiple sclerosis as well. I'm really surprised that they've not said bleed, bleed in the brain especially with these symptoms. That's the first thing I would have said. That's probably the most important thing that we need to rule out. So not sure about that one. That is it guys. Thank you so much for watching the channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was something a bit weird and a bit different, but with people Googling things more and more, I thought I would give it a go and see if I can guess. 
As always, if you are unwell, please go and see your doctor. This is not a replacement for a medical consultation. This was just a bit of fun. If you are new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any videos. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Take care guys and stay safe.